Well, I was working in kind of fancy restaurants uh, at an early age, and I found myself being more interested in the food that the El Salvadoran dishwashers wives had made them, and going out to Thai restaurants and Mexican restaurants, and kind of cooking the fancy Nouvelle cuisine that I've been working with. My food is inspired by the hotter climes. I believe that there's a different flavor presentation in equatorial nations, a different way they create and present flavor than classic kind of European flavors. One of the things you learn when you work with strong flavors is that you kind of contrast and balance. So if you have a dish that just has heat in it as one note, you know, it'll kind of be a dominant flavor. But these big flavors, the heat, the sweet, the sour, the spicy, the aromatic, are used together in contrasting ways to support those big flavors. There's a difference between full flavored food and spicy food, and there's also a difference between spicy food and super hot food. And these are things like herbs and garlic and ginger and lime juice and lemon juice that help pick up the flavors without being very spicy. And then you have cuisines that use a tremendous amount of spice that the food's not necessarily hot. Chilies are measured on a scale called the Scoville unit. They say a jalapeno comes in around 20 to 40,000. And the habanero reigned for a while at 400,000. And just recently, the Indians came up with a pepper, which they call the ghost. And that's in at over a million. And we work with a grower out there, and we have that. But they're getting pretty hot. <laughs> Well, if you want to start experimenting with spices, the easiest way is to get some whole cumin seed and rub it on a pork chop with salt and pepper and cook it. I think one of the greatest things about food is that it's a time when people sit down and share time with each other. And I mean, can you eat a really good meal by yourself? 